Okay, here we are, ready to make some molds. I got my mold boxes all printed up. They came out pretty good. Uh, they're a little shiny because I uh, sprayed them with a universal uh, mold release already. And for silicone, I am going to be using Mold Max 60, which is a high temp silicone rubber compound. This is a uh, two part uh, silicone. It's uh, 100 parts of part A to three parts of part B. So I'm going to be using a scale to do that uh, measurements. And I'm just going to mix this up in a, an old uh, yogurt cup which I have marked for three and a half ounces already because that's what it's going to take to fill half of one of these. I'm going to do uh, each half one at a time. Uh, basically to get that uh, measurement I just filled a measuring cup up with three and a half ounces of water, poured it in here and uh, marked that line. So uh, we're going to get started on this. Now I already, uh, already stirred this up and I already shook that up so I'm good to go there. Uh, first thing I need to do is turn my scale on and put the cup on there and zero it out using the tar feature. And then I can just uh, start adding silicone until I reach that line. Be helpful if I show you guys what I'm doing. That's pretty close. All right, so I got a uh, 162.22 grams, so I'm going to take my calculator, go 162.22 times 0 0.03, and I got to add 4.87 grams of uh, part B. So I'm just going to zero this back out, and using a pipette, I'm going to start adding this stuff in there until I get to the right measurement. Suck up enough, it'll be a lot quicker. There we go. In the past, I've done this with just a cut down uh, drinking straw with my finger over the top, but this is a lot easier to measure this way using one of these pipettes. Okay, getting close. Oop. I went over. Close enough. Can't spill that. There's not a lot in there. All right, now I'm just going to start mixing this up. I don't need my scale anymore, so I'm going to get that out of the way. And I just want to make sure I mix this thoroughly. Making sure I scrape the stuff off the mixing tool occasionally. Scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. I want to make sure this gets mixed thoroughly. That should be pretty good. Now before I actually go uh, dumping this in there, I actually like to take a paintbrush, this is just a quick disposable one, and I like to paint a layer on everything. This should help with any uh, bubbles or anything. Just keep it off the face of my uh, finished product. So let me do this real quick. Also going to fill in all the pins. Just make sure I'm on camera while I'm doing this, huh? Not sure uh, about this point of view camera, but it's the easiest way I could do this with everything I got going on right now. I have nowhere to put the camera without bumping into it. Just gonna make sure I got around the edges of all these. See some bubbles there, maybe. I don't know if you can or not, because probably don't even have that in the camera view. It's hard to concentrate on the viewfinder and what I'm doing at the same time, so you're just going to have to bear with me. 
All right, now that I've got most of that done, these really shouldn't matter. It's not a lot of detail back there. Now that I got that, I am just going to fill this up. I'm going to try to pour a steady stream in one spot so it fills up. I like to pour a little high too, so hopefully these little bubbles pop on the way down. sure that gets in the corner it's always better to make more than you actually need but I don't really need to fill this completely to the top anyway okay once I get that filled enough Wipe up any edges of the mess I made. Now, I don't have a vacuum chamber, so I am just going to use a vibration table to get any of these bubbles up to the surface. A vacuum chamber is definitely probably a better option. This will level out everything too. You can always just pop these little things with the end of a brush or something if it really bothers you. These are on the outside of the mold anyway, so it really doesn't matter. As long as they're off the faces of the bait, you're actually going to be pouring lead. But that's about it. That's how simple it is to pour a mold. So I'm going to probably do the other one off camera, and i got to let these sit for at least 24 hours, so I'll see you in another day or so. Okay, here we are. It's been at least 24 hours later and we're ready to demold these things. So first thing I like to do is just take a little screwdriver and just uh, run it along the edge. Break everything free. And just hopefully pop this out without wrecking it. There we go. That was pretty easy. Looks like it came out pretty good. No bubbles or anything I don't see. So let's do this other side. That too looks good. So I'm just gonna clean this up, just this edge a bit. there are a couple little, I don't know if you can see that, let me fix my light here, a couple little air bubbles on the edges here, but that doesn't matter, that's the back side, as long as the face is good, we should be good to go. So I'm going to clamp this up, just test fit it first, there you can see the marking, hopefully, that I mark my mold so I know what they are when they're on the shelf, so everything looks good, so now I just got to make some bait keepers. So basically I uh, have that one I bent before. I'm just going to lay it in there. Actually I'm going to put a hook in here first. And I can just see where I got to bend it up. I don't know if you can see that, just so when it sits in the mold, gravity will take over and hold it in place. So 
there you go. That's uh, basically how they're going to be. So I'm going to make up a whole bunch more of those and then we're going to melt some lead and uh, actually pour some of these and see what happens. So once I get all my bait keepers made, I am just going to put this on a plywood backer and I'm going to start laying everything in there. Hooks look like they fit perfect, so I did a good job during CAD. There we go, just going to make sure all my hook heads are in the right spot because that's the most critical thing because you don't want lead to fill into those. And I'm basically just going to sandwich this together now. plywood backer I'm gonna give this a squeeze and just gonna put two clamps on this now, you don't want to squeeze this thing too tight because then it'll deform the mold because it is silicone see how that goes we'll give this uh, first one a shot and see what happens I'm gonna heat up some uh, lead here and we'll start pouring Okay, my lid's all melted and I'm ready to do this. I am just using a hot pot too with a ladle. Just gonna scrape the crap off the top here. And we're gonna pour these in there. Doesn't take much. Oh, that one probably screwed that one up. I'll let my ladle heat up here for a minute. Now you can literally watch this stuff solidify. As soon as it turns that color, it's ready to demold. Do this without burning myself. There you go. One uh, custom jig head. I'm going to put these on this board over here for now so I don't burn my table. You know, they cool down pretty quick. Definitely uh, screwed that one up as you can tell. So we'll remelt that. Try again. Now, I don't know if it helps if the mold is hot or not, but we're going to just uh, reset this back up real quick and shoot another one. Shoot, I mean inject. I don't even mean inject, I mean pour. That's wrong. Wrong old half. Okay, here we go, round two. Oh, Jesus. Not very experienced at this. Making a mess. And should be good to go. All right, that one looked like it came out a lot better. Looks like I got all five.
Probably going to do one more batch of these off camera and then we'll continue on. So this is what I did today. I ended up doing four batches. I uh, got 19 good ones. Only had that one screwed up one. Uh, the first batch I did have some uh, pinholes in the eye there you can see. But I think that might just be because the mold was cold. I don't know if that matters. I think it does make a difference when you're doing aluminum. Not so sure on uh, silicone. But by the end they, uh, they came out good. I mean they do have like a little wrinkly finish to them. But that's because... I think it's from the actual mold because you can see the 3D printed mold is actually the same way from the layer lines and stuff. I don't know if I like clear coated this or painted it first. It would give it a nice smooth finish, but I don't really care. I kind of like that rough finish because it kind of looks like scales. And if I powder coat these, they come out nice and smooth anyway, so that really doesn't matter. But overall, the molds worked uh, fantastic. Now, the durability of these things, I hear, is around uh, 20 to 25 pours from what Elliot says. So, you figure uh, that would be like 100 jig heads, which is probably way more than I'll ever use. And I think uh, the amount of silicone I used was about 9 bucks because that little trial size, I think, is $25. And then by the time I get it shipped to my house, it's like, I think, $45. So, if I did the math correctly on how much I used for this mold, it's like 9 bucks, which is not too bad considering... Uh, a jig like this would probably cost you like six, seven bucks for a two pack in the store. Now, I think Fusion's telling me these are going to be about a half uh, an ounce when they're done. I don't know. I'm going to get them cleaned up and actually weigh them to see if uh, my calculations in Fusion were right. But let's uh, move on to the next step where I start actually cleaning these up, and you'll see how I do that. It's pretty easy. Okay, to clean these up, it's uh, pretty simple. I just uh, use a pair of snips here or uh, wire cutters, and I'm just snipping off that gate and a uh, sprue. And then that little part that's left, that just gets sanded off with some sandpaper. Now I have a little uh, 3D printed attachment that goes on my vacuum. And there's a little grid in there, so if I accidentally suck one up, it doesn't get lost into the vacuum. And it just uh, sucks up all the dust off the sandpaper, so I don't breathe that in. So I'm going to do this off camera because uh, i got to run the vacuum, and you don't want to hear all that. It's loud, so I'll just do that, and then uh, we'll come back, and uh, I'll weigh one of these up and see what it finished off as. Okay, I got these all cleaned up. Only took about five minutes, probably. Uh, you can see the bottom's nice and smooth now. But the details on these came out amazing now that I look at them. Compared to the little ones, I didn't lose anything. I got the lips, I got the nostril, gill plate, and the eye socket, which is uh, what I was most concerned about because I'm going to be using these with some uh, custom eyes I made, and they fit right in there. So hopefully once I get those glued in and clear coated over, they're going to hold up. But let's get a finished weight on these. Now, using the, what I got out of Fusion and some calculations, these were supposed to be about 0.54 of an ounce. So let's weigh one of these up and see what we get. Actually, I got to put that on ounces. We're still on grams from doing the mold. There we go, 0.50 exactly. So not too far off. Let's check a couple other ones. 0.517. 0.52. So all pretty close. So Fusion was actually... Uh, well, the information I got from Fusion was pretty close, so let me jump right back on the computer real quick, and I'll show you exactly how I figured that out, because if you're doing a bait and you want a exact weight, uh, this might help you out some. So let me run up to the computer, and we'll do that. Okay, here we are back in Fusion, and normally you'd want to do this in your initial design phase of your bait, but I figured this out halfway through this project, so here we are. Uh, the first thing I tried was I took the actual volume of this head, uh, kind of like I did with the mold in the mold box, and I went into Google and I found a volume to weight calculator for lead and it gave me a, a rough estimate of about 0 0.054. Uh, but then playing around in Fusion a little more, I figured out if you actually come up to this uh, head of the bait and right click, you can assign a physical material. Now I just uh, scrolled down until I found lead. And I just drag it onto the head of the bait and it's going to assign that. So now when I come up here and do properties, it actually comes up with pretty much the same thing, which is 0.547. So that's pretty close to the 0.50 I got, but you got to remember there's some shrinkage in lead when it's cooling down and all that. So that might be why there's a, a little bit of a difference because I did the same thing with a hook and I signed a carbon steel to this and it came out to 0 0.019. 
And as you can see from this picture, uh, that's pretty damn close. So overall, this is a, a good way to figure out the estimated weight of your bait in the design phase. So I thought you guys should know that. But anyway, let's get back into working on that actual jig head. Okay, I'm going to be powder coating a few of these to see how they come out. Uh, basically, I'm going to be using a fluidized bed. If you don't know what that is, just Google it. It basically just uses an aquarium pump to pump some air under your powder. This is a powder paint, they call it. This is the cheap Harbor Freight crap, so it doesn't come out that good, but works well enough. So basically, I'm just going to heat these up with a heat gun. That might be a little loud, so I apologize. Yeah, you just swirl them around in there, knock the powder off, and hang them up, and then uh, bake them in an oven to further cure them later. But we're just going to run a couple of these to see how they come out. So let's get started. Alright, here are some of the finished uh, swim bay heads from the first batch. Uh, as you saw, I did some powder coating and painting. Uh, that one's straight up powder coated, a little hard to see because it's white. This one was uh, powder coated and painting, and as you can see, you kind of lose some detail when you powder coat them. Fills in all those fine details, but that eye was just painted on, and then I add a little bit of a dome with some UV clear coat. But when it comes to the painted ones, uh, they come out looking uh, a lot better because you keep all that detail. I kind of drew a mouth on that one with the little nostrils. And then uh, some of these I actually drew some gills on. Those actually make it look pretty cool. I don't think that'll catch more fish, but it'll definitely catch some fishermen. Just did some various colors. This one will be a, a shad bait when I'm done. I think this is one of my favorites. Just love how that eye looks in there. And of course we did some uh, like perch colors, yellow, green... Nice uh, red eye on there. And like a baby bass. Now I probably will make a custom swim bait body for this, but these were actually designed around this. This is a uh, creature swim bait that I'm working on. It's actually a combination of my four tail grub with that little body from that little swim bait I had in the last video. Added some uh, little front flippers on there. Those really didn't work that well, so that'll get changed. But that's kind of what it looks like when it's rigged up with swim bait head. Like I said, I'm going to change this a lot, so you'll probably see the finished uh, creature swim bait when I'm done with it. It'll probably be on Instagram and my uh, web page. I don't know if I'll do another video on it, but you never know. But I'm going to make a bunch more of these and uh, do some various different colors and stuff like that, which I'll probably never fish with all these. So I think if uh, you made it this far through both these videos, uh, I'm going to do a giveaway. Uh, I'll call it my 2,000 giveaway because I recently hit 2,000 subscribers and let's say when this video hits 2,000 views I'll just uh, I'll make up uh, like a 10 pack of custom colors and uh, I'll give them away so Leave a comment down below and uh, be a subscriber and when this video hits 2,000 views I'll uh, I'll give them away. It might be a month from now. It might be six months from now. Who knows? That's up to you guys But anyway, I just want to say uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one